Here we have verse 12 of the book of Jude, in which Jude is continuing to uh, advance his rather graphic descriptions of these false teachers that have slipped into the congregation. Verse 12 gives us another string of descriptions that we uh, find here. Uh, we have hutoi. This is the demonstrative pronoun, masculine, plural, nominative. So these or these men are asin, from ami I am, third person plural, present active indicative. And then we have three nouns, really, that are uh, predicate nominatives that go along with these are. So the first of them is spilades. Uh, this word is actually uh, translated normally spots, although that is a slightly different word. The Greek word spilos means spots. Spilos uh, actually means a hidden reef, but they're so similar that some have thought there may have been some confusion along the way. Uh, and so uh, it's possible that the author here, Jude, meant uh, hidden reefs, as in rocky outcroppings that are just beneath the water and thus invisible but very dangerous, or uh, spots. It could be the uh, one is confused with the other, uh, but one way or another, uh, that's the first of these. So they are, we'll say, hidden reefs or spots. Uh, the second is uh, here, nephelai. This is from nephele, which means clouds. So they are spots, they're clouds. And then the third noun we have here, which is dendra, which means trees. Uh, so three nouns, all of which function as predicate nominatives in connection with the verb, which is here. Of course, the rest of the words are descriptive. Uh, they're clauses, which serve to uh, emphasize in some way or other what's going on. So we have the first of these. They are hidden uh, reefs or possibly spots. Uh, and now we have this uh, phrase. So we have uh, the article, nominative, uh, masculine, uh, plural. So the in preposition with the dative. Here's the dative article in the agapais, humon. The agapais uh, is the plural. Uh, it would be literally the loves, of course, but the term here uh, is used in connection with what are sometimes called love feasts. It was, of course, common in the ancient uh, church to have uh, communion uh, combined with a time of uh, feasting together. And so, in the love feasts of you is the way that's normally rendered. So, in your love feasts, they are hidden reefs. Uh, the peril of them is, of course, not uh, plain. Or they are spots, could be one way or another. Then we have this uh, participle, sun u o ku menoi. It's actually a combination of three root words. We have sun, the preposition, means together, you, which usually means good. And then the o ku is from echo, I have. And so that's the idea, uh, to have together good or well. Uh, and it has to do with uh, uh, being together. Uh, usually it's associated with the love feast, so they're gathered together with you in a, uh, a sort of a joyful expression, and yet the real peril of these people is not altogether uh, clear, so he uses the additional indeclinable adverb of phobos, which means fearless or without fear. So there, I've heard it rendered uh, reveling together, rejoicing, feasting, uh, partying, you might even say, together without fear, and yet they are these hidden perils in your love feast. So that's the first of these. This phrase probably goes with this prior one, so it's poi my non tes. Poi my non tes uh, is uh, actually derived from the word for shepherd or to feed, as in feeding sheep. So they're uh, feasting together, as in grazing together with you, and of course the object of it is the reflexive pronoun heautus. So they are feeding themselves as they feast together with you without fear. I think that's probably the best way to view that. The second of our nouns is the noun nephali, means clouds. They are clouds devoid of rain, however, or water. On hudroi, uh, hudor is, of course, the word for water. The negation of it here is without water. So they're clouds, uh, but uh, they don't have any of the uh, refreshing content of clouds. 
and so they are clouds without rain, and then hupo, preposition, takes the genitive, uh, by, and then anemone. Uh, anemone uh, is a word, one of the words for winds. So by winds takes the genitive, so this is the genitive, plural, by winds. Paraferumeni. Uh, this is from parafero. Uh, pharaoh, of course, means to carry something. Parafero sort of means to be carried about, uh, carried here and there, you might say. So by the winds, carried about. They are clouds uh, with the devoid of water, blown around by the winds would be the idea. So that's the second descriptive phrase. The third of them is dendra, which means trees, again in the plural. And then uh, the word here that used with it, thinoporina. Uh, uh, this uh, is derived from a, uh, uh, an adjective that means withering. Uh, so it uh, is a combination of a couple of terms, but taken together, that's the idea. So they're trees that are withering, and then a uh, carpa, carpos is the word for fruit. These are without fruit, so they're withering, fruitless, dis from the number two, so twice or two times. Uh, it's an inclinable adverb. Apothonta, uh, uh, apothononta. This is from apothnesco, means to uh, die. So these are twice uh, dead, uh, twice dying, a participle. Probably the twice here is uh, that they not only are without fruit because it's uh, their autumn trees late in the uh, autumn season, but also because they uh, are being uprooted, and that's really the sense of this last word, ekrizotinta. This uh, is a word that uh, ek uh, means out of. The uh, rizoo is the root of the verb here. It means to root, and so up together it would be to be uprooted. And so these are uh, these are autumn trees. Uh, that's the sense of this word that we have here. There. Uh, withering because they're late in the fall, they're without fruit, but they're also uprooted because presumably they have uh, used their uh, function and now are being uh, set aside or uprooted and cast aside. So on three different counts, of course, these are uh, individuals who are described as having a, a sort of a perilous presence there in the church. Uh, and uh, for all of these reasons, of course, the warning is now being stated even more emphatically by uh, our author Jude.